Welcome to Nevada News Makers on the broadcast today. Ace political reporter Sean Whaley, he'll join us. Plus, on the Power Pundit panel, Mylon Hawkins, Fred Locken, and Lucas Valletta. It's all coming up next on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Early in the morning or throughout the night, professional truck drivers are on the job serving you, safely moving freight that's crucial to our economy. From the oldest industries to our newest innovators, from the exotic to the everyday, trucks are everywhere, moving everything. Never afraid to embrace a future that makes Nevada and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. We will not come out against it. We haven't period. spent a, we have, period. We have not spent a dime to fight it. We will not spend a dime to fight it. That is an NV Energy lie from the CEO. NV Energy is spending $30 million to defeat Question 3. Because the more you pay, the more the NV Energy monopoly profits from you. The Review Journal called their No on 3 campaign fear-mongering propaganda. We will not spend a dime to fight it. $30 million worth of lies. Break up with NV Energy's monopoly by voting yes on Question 3. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shack, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shack. Back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're always pleased to welcome back to the program Sean Whaley, famed political reporter of the state of Nevada. Pleasure to have you back on the program, sir. Thank you, Sam. And looking good from your travels. Thank you. I uh, had a good time and didn't shave for a while. <laughs> well, good for you. All right, so let's start with the Supreme Court hearings. Um, and uh, what do you make of that as a reporter? Because, it, you know, it, it seemed to me that for the media, this was the biggest story, the greatest story, all time coverage, all the time. And, um, and I, I didn't feel the balance there. Um, what was your thought at the end of all this? Well, it is an incredible story for a reporter to cover, but I, I do I have sympathy for reporters in that situation because it's kind of a last minute, here it comes, uh, blindsides everybody, there's not enough time to digest the information, and that goes for everybody, the people voting, the reporters, the, the people who are consuming the news as to these allegations and are they true and do we have time to vet them, it was a last minute thing. So I think reporters are in a terrible situation trying to be accurate about what's going on. And certainly there did seem to be some bias uh, against the uh, justice uh, nominee and by some media reports and individual reporters nowadays, I think some of them are more agenda-driven reporters than factual-driven reporters, and I'm not a fan of that. Uh, but I think it's a terrible situation that everyone gets put in when this happens at the last minute because it's just if people have to make a decision, there's not time to vet all this information, and, and it's just difficult, and it just polarized people, and people are angry. I don't know what that might mean for November, but it's uh, it, I, I just thought it was unfortunate the way it played out. You know what I thought at the end of this now, now that... Uh, that uh, the, the judge is now seated as a justice, was that this has been one of the biggest fundraising efforts ever because my phone has been blowing up for a couple of weeks now with every possible campaign asking for money either in favor or against. It's been a gigantic fundraising effort. Absolutely. And the interesting question is who's going to be motivated to vote now, and I've heard different theories on this, and these are just people speculating, so it's not a factual. We won't know till Election Day, obviously, but uh, I have heard the suggestion that Republicans who supported the nominee and support the uh, president felt that it was kind of a railroad job, and that's going to motivate maybe the Trump base to vote maybe more than they had thought about doing prior to this, this, this situation. And certainly the Democratic base is going to go out and force and vote. It's that big block of people out there who uh, maybe weren't 
intimately involved in this debate and just watching it from a distance is the question, will they turn out? And if so, uh, how are they going to vote, especially all those independent voters? And there's a lot of them. Um, it's also interesting to see the fear that has been engendered by this, um, promoted by people on both sides of the issue, um, that the horrors that are going to come, these are not people that follow the Supreme Court and the way the Supreme Court works. I mean, things do not happen overnight at the Supreme Court. No, they sure don't. It's going to take a long time for a case to potentially make its way forward and be considered by the court, whether it might be over abortion or it might be a voting rights issue or it might be some other issue, although there's a number of lawsuits out there on all kinds of Trump policies that are, are working their way towards that Supreme Court, so some may come about sooner than rather than later, but the whole uh, abortion right to life, right to choose debate is not, I don't think there's a case out there right now, and I could be wrong, that's ripe for that particular issue to be cited anytime soon. And in Nevada, we have in our constitution a protection in that area, so it's more going to be a state-by-state -state thing as to how, how these uh, decisions affect people. Um, it's, it's also fascinating to look at this um, in terms of you know, we had a whole thing going on in the Silver State for quite a few years about going to the Missouri system of, uh, of the governor nominating people for the Supreme Court and then them running for re-election rather than the public voting for them. And I was against this. And I, I, I debated, uh, and I was proud to, Sandra Day O'Connor on this program uh, discussing this. And I felt that the public had a right to, to, to make the vote. Watching all this that has gone on with the Supreme Court of the United States makes me even stronger in my conviction that uh, we want to be electing judges and having our independent choice. Yeah, I think the legal system, the attorneys, people in that uh, arena are more supportive of that type of a process. I know I take the, the money Senator out. Bill Raggio <laughs> was an advocate, and I think he pursued that at one time in the legislature. Oh, he was how Senator Day O'Connor got here. Yeah, so I know that that's an issue for people in, the, in that arena to, to support that, but most of the public want to weigh in. They want to have a choice. I, for our Nevada Supreme Court, there's been a pretty much a uh, just a single choice in, in most uh, of the Supreme Court elections, but we do have a contested race or two this time around. So people get to make their decision, and uh, that's the way it is. I don't see that changing in Nevada anytime soon. And I wish that more people would call their favorite attorneys and get input. Um, on ju judicial races, especially the Supreme Court, but even district court races, because I, for one, do not understand what it's like to be in somebody's courtroom. And so I'm calling people in those fields and saying, hey, who do you recommend? People that I trust and saying, you know, you deal with these people, you know, who should I be voting for? And I think that makes me much more informed when I go to the polling places. Absolutely. All right, let's take a break. More with Sean Whaley when we come back. Tamarack Junction is South Reno's hotspot with over 450 of the latest slots and video games. Sully Sports Bar, the Dining Car Restaurant, William Hill Sportsbook, and the Tamarack Steakhouse and Lounge. We're just north of the Summit Wall in South Virginia. Yeah. It's coming. California is coming to Nevada. And now, they want to take Nevada's Senate seat, too. Californians are bankrolling Jackie Rosen's campaign, and she's going to pay them back. If California buys control of the Senate, you get socialized medicine, higher taxes, less liberty. California is not cheap, and it won't be cheap for taxpayers. Kick California out of this Senate race. Vote no on Jackie Rosen. NRSC is responsible for the content of this advertising. You tried to move on. You tried to put your life back together. Until one day, you see him. At the store, when you're leaving work. On your doorstep. The criminal who tore your life apart is walking free. But you may never know until you come face to face with him. Don't let this happen to more victims. Vote yes on question one. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world.
The Tamarack Junction Steakhouse is known for signature steaks, handcrafted cocktails, and world-class wines. Join us Thursdays and Friday nights from 4.30 to 6.30 in the Steakhouse Lounge for live music, gourmet plates, and well-priced wines just north of the Summit Mall on South Virginia. This is Nevada Newsmakers. Back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're talking with one of Nevada's premier political reporters, Sean Whaley. Pleasure to have you back on the program, sir. Thank you. Um, so we have a uh, United States Senate race that is going full tilt. What is your thoughts on it so far? Well, it, it's going to be an interesting day in November because I just really cannot get a handle on how this is going to play out. I, I know the Democratic challenger, Ms. Rosen, is a, slightly ahead in the most recent polls I've seen. I know Senator Heller um, has aligned himself with Donald Trump, and but he's really taken it uh, as far as uh, his constituents go with the whole health care debate and whether or not uh, Obamacare should be repealed in its entirety and the whole pre-existing condition discussion. So that's an issue that he is having difficulty with. And I think that may be why the polls show a slight advantage for, for Jackie Rosen. But I just, it depends on turnout. I don't know who's going to come out in November and, and vote. And uh, the Democrats have a, an edge in the registration. But there's a huge number of nonpartisan voters in Nevada now, over 300,000, and I'm just not a really clear on, on what's going to motivate them to vote and how, how they're going to align themselves as a, you know, not a block, but the majority of them, how they'll go. Well, the other thing that's interesting is this is an off-year election. This is not a presidential year, which means the turnout is normally tamped down anyway. Um, and you would then have question three plus question six, the energy questions, that... Are they going to get people out because people are scared that either their power bill is going to go up or they want their power bill to go down? Um, and they really don't understand these questions at all. No, and they're complex and they're hard to understand. And there's a very concerted effort this time around. It's the second time for question three because they have to be voted on twice. And there's a much more... Uh, formal campaign against question three. Uh, last time it just kind of slid through. But the last time we had a midterm election in 2014, it was a very, very low turnout and the Republicans just swamped the Democrats in Nevada. And I know the Democrats vowed to never see that happen again. So midterm turnout, can you get your voters out? Can you get them to the polls? That's going to be the key. I think because of the Supreme Court issue and some other issues out there nationally, the whole you know, are you going to validate Trump or are you going to endorse him or vote to oppose him on the different candidates? I think that may make for a better turnout than we might normally see for a midterm. And it's interesting because once again, um, we appear to be a purple state, a strongly purple state, because Republicans appear to be coming back in Washoe County. Yep, they are. And I, I don't think they're going to have as much luck down in, in southern Nevada, but um, you know, the Democrats who are fighting to take control of the, the legislature and, and even get a uh, veto-proof two-thirds majority in the Senate and the Assembly are certainly working to achieve that in Clark County. I don't think they're going to have as much luck in the North with the, their candidates just because of the registration. But they are certainly hopeful, and that would be their dream come true. Whether that happens or not remains, I, I think it would be tough to achieve, but it's, it's potentially out there. Um, one of the things that concerns me is the number of candidates who do not want to talk to the media. Uh, they don't want to do forums like this or they choose the most friendly forums where they don't feel that they're going to be asked any tough questions. Um, and I take out of that uh, uh, discussion uh, Dean Heller and Jackie Rosen because on our recent trip to D.C. they both came on the program with no problem and, and answered every question that was thrown at them. Um, but we are seeing lots of people, I don't want to go through the list because sadly the list is way too big of politicians not talking to the media. Um, does this strike you as something you've seen? This is a movie you've seen before. Certainly the governor um, had the nickname of Bunker Bryan when he was the attorney general because he did not like doing uh, media interviews. He's done some over the past couple of years, but not very many. I think it's a terrible trend, and I think it's a trend, and I think it's going to continue, and I think it's just a ter terrible. 
if you're going to run for public office, you should speak up, you should debate your opponent, you should have a healthy discussion of the issues. But the approach nowadays from their handlers is, you know, the less you say, the better. Every time you open your mouth, you risk alienating a voter. Unfortunately, the, the press core is a shadow of itself due to budget cuts and reductions in staff and television and, and print journalism, and so the few reporters that are out there are overrun with um, dog and pony type show events that the candidates want to do. It's hard to get through that and get to the, the real people and get them to talk, and I think it's just a travesty. Well, one of the things that uh, should be pointed out, and maybe most people in the general public don't know this, but most of these campaigns are run by out-of-state people, and those people have a formula um, that they believe works for them around the country. But if you ask somebody who wanted to be a United States Senator, Shelley Berkeley, her out-of-state uh, you know, advisors did a horrible job. They had no clue about Nevada. They didn't understand that Shelley Berkeley would play anywhere in the state. And so they stopped her talking in Washoe County. They stopped her going to the rurals. It was ridiculous. Yeah, I'm, uh, and I'm not saying I'm in favor or against Shelley Berkey. I'm just saying her campaign, and she has admitted this multiple times, was a disaster because it was out-of-state people. We don't have enough people in Nevada running campaigns who know what they're doing. Well, I don't. I, there are some local people running campaigns as well, and I'm sure they bring in national people outside because now every campaign like that is a, a litmus test for the party nationwide. Are we going to control Congress? Are we going to win the Senate? So there are stakes that involve people far, far away from Nevada. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. But um, if you don't know the state and you don't know the people who live here, then you're at a real disadvantage if you're coming in as an advisor. And as a candidate, I would certainly want to vet anybody before I followed a policy like that. But I think sometimes nationally it's dictated, and they're the candidates of the party, and they go along maybe reluctantly, and I don't think it serves anybody very well. Um, and what about what Tip O'Neill said, which is all politics are local? Absolutely, absolutely. In Nevada, you know, people, a lot of people vote, they pay attention, they're involved, they, they are aware of the ballot questions to some extent at least. I think a lot of voters in Nevada are pretty well informed. I'm, I'm sometimes surprised at how well informed they are and how they vote on things. So I think in Nevada especially, uh, you don't want to talk down to the voters, you want to respect them, you want to answer honestly. I think people appreciate honesty and candor and that's what we need more of, I think. Um, last question, polling, do you trust it? I am not sure because I just don't think the polling still reflects the fact that so much of our population doesn't have landlines anymore. I still have a landline. I get a lot of phone calls. But is that polling reflective of people who have cell phones only? Are they reaching out to those people, especially young people who probably are living off just their uh, you know, their, their cell phones and, and don't have access to a landline. So I'm just not sure anymore how, if they can uh, account for that, if they know how to deal with that. I've never gotten a phone call on my cell phone for a poll. So I, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I think it's going to be close for a lot of these races uh, just because there's going to be good turnout by both parties. So those independents will be crucial. We'll see. My sense is exactly what you're saying, which is that it's going to be close. Um, we'll see what the reality is. Please come back plenty of times before the election and after uh, to discuss this thing. Always love you having you here. Thank you, sir. All right, and we'll be right back. Here's award-winning Nevada teacher, Jeff Hinton. One concern about question three is that it would increase electric bills paid by consumers. As a teacher, I'm also concerned about how three would impact school budgets. School buildings use a lot of electricity. Question three would force school districts to pay higher electric bills. That means we'd have less money for classroom education for our kids. Please join our coalition and vote no on three. Thank you. Dean Heller made a promise. I'm telling you right now, I cannot support a piece of legislation that takes insurance away from hundreds of thousands of Nevadans. But then Donald Trump threatened Dean Heller. Look, he wants to remain a senator, doesn't he? And then Dean Heller broke his promise. Heller says he has changed his stance on the repeal. He decided not to cross Trump. Senator Dean Heller will vote to proceed. That is a complete 180. Dean Heller broke his promise and caved to Donald Trump. SMP is responsible for the content of this ad. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. 
At Design Outdoor, we specialize in all hardscapes, pavers, and walls you'll need for everything from wonderful small yards to full-blown outdoor living. And we only refer the best contractors to make your vision a reality. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. Everyone is talking about opioids, but they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take an Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. This is Nevada Newsmakers. Back on Nevada Newsmakers, uh, we have a great Power Pundit panel, part two with them. Uh, Lucas Folletta is here, an attorney with McDonald Carano. Fred Lockham, pr pr professor, if I can say it. <laughs> he can do it, but I can't say it. <laughs> professor of Political Science at Truckee Meadows Community College, and Mylon Hawkins, Vice President of Interface Computer Associates. So, uh, potentially bigger than the governor's race or the United States Senate race is question three in the state, which is about energy. Um, where are we in this battle? Because it sure seems that there's an incredible amount of money being spent on it. Boy, there sure is. And I think that uh, uh, as I talk to folks, uh, they really do feel that it's been a battle. But uh, if the election were to be held today, I think the, uh, the no votes may be uh, sort of taking an edge at the moment. Uh, it's a very confusing thing, I, again, for the voters of Nevada why these things come along and they're so complex. Mm -hmm. uh, but this was a mistake made by NV Energy uh, over uh, solar, uh, roof solar, uh, and that mushroomed through the legislature and became this, uh, this issue. But there are more complex issues. It's funny that no state has, has gone this route for more than 20 years. It's interesting that in most of those states, they're paying a lot more for electricity than we are. They have expensive energy sources, though. But it's just, I think, for the voter, it's very hard uh, sometimes to sort through the facts and, and know what would be best. I know that McDonald Carano is neutral on question three, but can you give us your perspective on it? So um, people can sure. understand both sides? Yeah. I mean, my perspective is, I, I think it, it um, I think some of the complexity is overblown. I think if you read the question itself, it really boils it down to the to the to the question that the voter has to decide: um, Do you favor monopoly uh, monopoly franchises, or do you favor um, competitive choice as the system you want you, that you trust to deliver the best results over time in terms of your electricity pricing? Um, to me, it's an intuitive choice to vote yes because competition is how you know that's that's the um, tool that we use to govern all of our other markets. And I don't personally see electricity as being distinguishable from other things like milk or baby formula or any of these other, you know, quote unquote, essential items that, that we buy. Um, but I agree that, that, that implementing the question is not uncomplicated because we have to unpack a system that, we, that has been in existence for a long time. And having people who live in Connecticut and who did this, they're paying much, much higher rates than um, they were before. Um, there is a very big issue in this. Uh, NV Energy and the other companies that may be in place uh, own these power lines. There is a power grid that any new company is going to have to buy in. And they're going to have to make that money up one way or the other. And big companies falling out of the system. Look, this is a battle between the billionaires and the billionaires. We've got Warren Buffett on one side and Sheldon Adelson on the other side, basically. And who's going to pay for that? Well, I'll tell you who's going to pay. All the little consumers, because they always do. The big guys will get a break, and the little guys won't. And that's how it works out. Do you agree, Lucas? Um, no, I don't agree. Um, first of all, the transmission and distribution system, um, cost recovery on that system is going to remain a regulated um, rate. The, the question itself doesn't uh, deregulate or restructure the transmission distribution and, system. And this is also an important point, which is regulation is not going to go away. Right. It's not going to go away. It will be different. I mean, whereas today we have, um, we have price regulation at a high level in the uh, utility industry. What we'll, have, it's, what we'll have instead is market regulation. So it will be more like, it will be regulated more like the gaming industry is regulated, where um, the Public Utilities Commission will presumably um, regulate entry to the market but won't regulate the prices per se. 
Um, what will happen with price over time, you know, there's, there's I think, both sides cite evidence, persuasive evidence in, in support of their arguments. But I think to look at it from the perspective of what gives me the lower price in the short term is the wrong way to think about it. It's what system do you trust the most over time to give you the best result. So for our viewers and listeners, I just want to say that if you want to go to our website and watch the show with Phil Satry, where he is uh, uh, head of or co-chair of No on Three, and John Wellinghoff, who is supportive of Yes on Three, I think those are probably the two best examples and well worth about 40 minutes of your time, and you'll understand this whole issue a lot better. Um, let's talk about uh, what's going on with the U.S. Senate race. Um, I'm, I am not a fan of polling. I, I, I just have no faith in polling, at least general <laughs> polling at this point whatsoever, but it does seem to me um, that this race is pretty darn close, but Dean Heller seems to have picked up a lot of confidence lately. Because he picked up Sandoval's endorsement. That that is huge. Uh, there's been certainly some coverage in the in the media about Sandoval coming forward. He had kind of said he wasn't, but he has a long relationship with Dean Heller, and that endorsement. And he appoint, appointed him. Yes, endorsements mm -hmm. don't always matter, but in the case of Dean Heller and Sandoval, that that is an important pickup that brings a number of Republicans on board that he wasn't counting on. I think prior to that, he was probably running behind. Uh, in whatever deep polling they're doing, uh, this gives them a chance now. To, I, I, I would suspect they're neck and neck as we look at this. Okay, we got about ten and seconds. And I apiece. would agree. It, this is a horse race. <laughs> Razor thin margin mm -hmm. for sure. And that's where we have to leave it. Thank you all mm -hmm. very much. We'll be right back. Women and children, when facing fleeing an abusive relationship, shouldn't have to choose leaving their pet behind or leaving. And Noah's Animal House removes that barrier. And we are excited to have a facility in Las Vegas to serve Southern Nevada and Northern Nevada in Reno so that women and children can be right next door to their pets while they're on their road to recovery and safety. Grab your toga and head inside Edge Nightclub for Noah's Animal House 2. Animal House has gone country this year with a live performance by country star Tyler Rich. A bird's eye captures its surroundings at different heights. At Brian Culp of Photography, we can make your imagination soar over buildings, parks, cityscapes, and beyond. Brian's images tell the story and get the job done. If you need a new perspective to tell your story, contact Brian today. Brian Culpa Photography. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Hi, my name's Marilyn Miner, and I'm sure you'd agree that Nevada is a very special place to live. I was born here, and my husband and I have raised our family here. I feel it's a privilege to live and work in the Truckee Meadows. I especially enjoy helping my clients reach their real estate goals. Sometimes the smallest details provide the greatest satisfaction. I'd be complimented to talk to you about your next move. Call Marilyn Miner at Dixon Realty, 742-1280, or log on to MarilynMiner.com. St. Ives Florist, for every holiday and every special occasion. For romance, custom home design, we have the largest selection of fresh flowers in northern Nevada, and we also offer a large selection of unique gift items. Come see me, Lori Ann, at St. Ives Florist, 700 South Wells Avenue, or call me at 333-9190. On our next broadcast, the editor and publisher of Range Magazine, C.J. Hadley, will see you then.